welcome to our session. We are glad that you are here. Hopefully you have gotten comfortable in a quiet private space, if that's possible. Hopefully you settled into the music a bit and we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Laydeen, Laydeen King, and I am located here in New Jersey, uh, about 20 minutes outside of Midtown Manhattan. And I have the pleasure of having one of my teachers, elders, Mrs. Ada Robinson, who is here with me and us in holding space for us today. Ada, would you mind sharing where you're located? Um, yes, I'm located in Marshall, Michigan, and that's um, halfway between Detroit, and I see one of my sisters uh, from Detroit, and Chicago. And I live in where if you eat Kellogg's cornflakes, I'm located right in that area. Uh, and I am so happy to be here with you and uh, looking forward to what comes to each of you from this session. And thank you for being here. Yes, yes. thank you, Ada. Mm -hmm. And in the workshop description, you would have noticed this quote by Audre Lorde. Caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. So keeping that quote in mind, our intention for this space is really about creating a holding space for you to show up, to be held, to be exactly as you are with all that you've experienced today in this Upswell Summit and before you even entered the Upswell Summit. If you're here, you probably have an interest and commitment and possibly even a daily walk to making our country and our world a more equitable world and country. So it's our intention that you have a holding space, a space to simply rest and be. And so stating our intention, I want you to consider what your intention is in choosing to be in this space for the next 60 minutes or so. So just taking about 10 seconds, why are you here? And what is your intention for being in this space today? If you'd like to place it in the chat, great. If you just want to bring it into your own awareness for yourself, that's also great, whatever works for you. 10 seconds. So I want for you to continue to stay connected to your intention as we speak briefly about the impact of sound. And after that, we'll just tap on whiteness and bringing ourselves back to ourselves from whiteness. Then we'll go into our music meditation, which is the bulk of this experience. Then you'll have a little bit of time to integrate the experience and then we will close with gratitude and what you're taking with you. So the impact of sound, I really just wanted to share a quick personal story. I don't know if any of you, particularly in the Northeast, are familiar with the Omega Institute. And this is in Rhinebeck, New York. And it's basically a center of learning and you kind of go out there and take various workshops. So being a student at Barbara Brennan School of Healing, and that's where I had the pleasure of meeting Mrs. Ada Robinson, who was one of my teachers in this four-year program, and she was the only black teacher at the school. So know that Mrs. Ada Robinson saved my life 
<laughs> because even though it was healing school, it was still whiteness. Okay. And I wasn't quite sure if I was going to make it through. And I am sure that she is a large part of why I made it through. And so at Barbara Brennan School of Healing, we would do these continuum classes. So I decided to take a continuum class at the Omega Institute. So we're sitting there for five days sounding. With our own mouths, we're making sounds. We might do O, we might do E, we might, you know, they're just various sounds. And I'm being open to the experience, but I'm thinking in my head, nothing's happening here. Like I'm not getting a bada boom, bada bang, like nothing huge is happening, but I'm gonna stay in the experience and trust that I'm where I need to be. I return home to New Jersey. I go to see my massage therapist because I happen to have an appointment with her that Saturday. And she goes, so what have you been up to? And I said, well, not much. You know, I went to the Omega Institute. She goes, well, what were you doing? So I explained what we were doing. She goes, well, let me tell you, the typical tension that I feel in your muscles when I am massaging you, she said, none of it's there. She's like, I don't, it's like, I don't have anything to work on today because you don't have any of the tension in your muscles that you typically have. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so that was my experience with sounding and my own personal experience. It's not just an intellectual understanding that sound manipulates the physiology and that sound can heal and does heal the physiology. So I just wanted to share that as a personal experience of the impact of sound for me, because here we are in this music meditation, okay? And so whiteness, here we are today in this summit talking about race, racism, other isms. And as you may know, as you likely know, Whiteness is a social and political construction. So it is not biology. It does not speak to the truth in the big T of who we are because we are all mm, energy and we are all inherently love, lovable, worthy, beautiful, and brilliant. And what race and particularly white was constructed to do was to deny that truth, okay? And so through the music, we want to build a bridge back to ourselves, the truth of who we really are. So when I'm talking about whiteness, white is a color, it is a culture, and it is also a consciousness. So traveling the country for about a decade, I was teaching educators what it does it mean to be white. At the first level of color is pretty simple. You look at someone and you, if they look white, they may not be white, but if they look white, that's the construct, white at the color level. Then if you go more deeply, you look at white as a culture. So throughout today, we have been engaging in conversations about white culture. So the fact that I didn't know that I now live on unceded land of the Munzee Lenape is all rooted in white culture because white culture is the dominant culture in our country. I was never taught that history. So in white culture, very often there's a certain history that is told that in and of itself is not false, but it is not complete. Some have also been talking about having to choose in your different identities and you compartmentalize your identities. I was in the ableism with um, an anti-racist or racial equity lens and there was a brother there talking about often being called to decide between being disabled or being black. And that is also a part of white culture where we compartmentalize ourselves instead of being able to embrace the entirety that we are. The fact that I'm speaking standard English right now is a white cultural norm. 
many and most cultures in throughout the world are multilingual. But in this country, in white culture, in the United States of America, standard accent free English is like money in the bank. Okay. So then we go even deeper beyond white as a color, white as a culture, we go into consciousness. And white racial consciousness is a studied sociological process. So white people have a particular racial identity development process. And this is Janet Helms work, if you wanna look that up. So I can predict what a white person is gonna say based on when we're talking about race. And that tells me where they are in their racial consciousness development. Now, why is all of this important? Because if we're going to create and live into a racially just society, I, even as a racially ambiguous black woman, need to be able, as Dr. Sean was saying today on the main stage, I need to forget the lens and pick up the mirror. All right. Pick up the mirror so I can see what is my relationship to white as a color? How do I express white as a culture? And how do I express white racial consciousness, even as a black woman? Because I do. It's a part of my socialization. And the more I know about that, the more I can make a different choice. And so energy is consciousness, which is why I love this work. Because as a racially ambiguous black woman, I have lived race quite saliently much of my life. And then I have the Barbara Brennan School of Healing training that is all about consciousness and being able to transform and return to the truth of who we are. So when I'm talking about bridging back, bridging back, this is what we're talking about, is moving from whiteness, recognizing white as a color culture consciousness, and bringing ourselves back to the truth of who we are, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? And so the flow, next we will get into our music meditation. So we will bask in the frequencies of various musical selections, that we have meditated on, I have meditated on and received, these are the songs that ought to be played, okay? There'll be about 25 minutes for that. After that, you will have at least three minutes of silence. And in that time, Ada and I invite you to be still. If you've been moving, dancing, making sounds, whatever works for you or arises for you during the music meditation is welcome here because Ada and I are holding a sacred space of transformation for you to be held and rest for the next 25 minutes. You want that to come to a still point and allow that to integrate. Then you will hear another musical selection. That's your cue to bring your awareness back to your physical body, back to the physical space, and at that point, you will have a choice to share your experience with another person because you're going to be put in breakouts. Or if you don't want to share your experience with at least one other person, you're going to click on return to the main room. And then you can stay with yourself. Ada and I will be there while the others can process verbally. So that's how you have a choice. Okay. After that, we'll come together as a whole group and a few of you who volunteer to come to the stage are welcome to share your experience. Ada, being highly intuitive, will share any insights that have come to her. Then of course, we'll give gratitude, which is a certain frequency that is a high frequency. And then we'll invite you to consider what you're taking with you. I'm talking a lot, but after this slide, I promise we're going right into the music. In terms of music meditation supports, please put yourself on mute. Why is that important? Because you wanna allow yourself to fully have your private experience. You might start sounding, you might start coughing, you might start crying, you never know. Or you might just sit in stillness and silence. Everyone's experience is their own experience. 
So put yourself on mute so that you and everyone else can have a safe space in, in a private space in order to, uh, your, to allow your experience. Next, you wanna get some tissue just in case some emotions might arise, some sadness or crying. You wanna be in a private space where you won't be disturbed. Again, connect with your intention for being here. One of the things I was taught at Barbara Brennan School of Healing was the Horic dimension and that dimension of intentionality from where we create. So when I set my intention, I am truly using my free will to consciously create that which I desire. So align with your intention for being here. Also, know that the music and lyrics are not about a gendered white Jesus, okay? Though some of the words may speak of he, she, or white Jesus, well, I won't say white Jesus, but know that what we're speaking of, the frequency here, is your divine self, the divine that lives in, as, and through you, and whatever you believe God to be, okay? You lean into that. As you take in the music and the lyrics, bring them into your heart, into your body, into your gut, not just your mind, not just your intellect. Allow them to flow into your being. Finally, feel free to move, make sounds, allow as much of your experience as you can and allow what arises to be here in loving awareness, okay? So we are going to get started so for the next 20, 25 minutes, just allow the music to wash over you and to move you and to meet whatever it is that's here for you so that you might find a place of rest.
this way. Oh, I'm lost, alone in my pain. I tried to get back on my own. Now I know I was wrong. I I swear to see, I see, I 
but I'm drifting away.
Here comes the sun. It feels like years since, you, since you've been here. It's been a long, cold winter. Now we flow to the river deep within, taking three minutes in stillness to integrate whatever has arisen for you. Just take about one more minute. About 30 more seconds. So at this point, you have a choice. You're going to be placed in breakouts. Once you go to your breakout, if you choose not to share verbally with another and you want to stay in silence and in your own experience, just come back to the main room and we'll be here. But for those of you who want to share with at least one other person, you can select the breakout room and you'll have four minutes total to share. So be mindful of the number of people because you have four minutes total to share. And then you'll automatically come back to the main room. Enjoy your time of sharing.
Hi, Ladine. The breakouts have been created. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're on top of it. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Hey, Tanya. Hello. Hey, I'm, I'll let you know when there's one more minute, okay? Okay, no problem. I did set it for four minutes, though, when we went oh, in. Oh, you did? Okay. All That's right, then I won't worry about it. Thank you. No problem. Tanya, will I automatically see people once they come back? 
It looks like they're all back now, I think, because uh, there were less in the breakouts after. Okay, great, because I don't see Ada anymore. Is there a way you can get her on screen? I see her. One second. And at this point, since people are back, we'd love for you to give you a chance to share for any of you who would like to what your experience was and knowing that this is not about getting it right, white culture. It's not about it being a certain way or being perfect, white culture. It's about showing up as you are and knowing that this is a space within which you can do that and simply rest and be as you are and allow the music to invite you into that. So if you'd like to share, just so indicate and Tonya will bring you up on screen. You see me? Yes, Hi. I can see you now. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I saw you all the time, but this thing just popped up. And so mm -hmm. I just kept pushing buttons till I got back. <laughs> well, I'm glad. <laughs> I know you know how you're a persistent lady, so you find your way back. <laughs> so while <laughs> others might be deciding if they want to share or not, are there any insights that you want to share based on the music, your experience of the music meditation and this energetic container? Uh, yes. Um, I thought, I thought the music was wonderful. Uh, and I felt that this was what they needed right now. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it brought relaxation into their uh, experience. And hopefully, this is my hope, that um, their inner guides directed them to what it is that they needed at this time from this experience. Mm -hmm. Because everybody that came in came in expecting to have some kind of experience. Uh, but sometimes we want one experience and uh, there's another one that the universe have for us. So I just, in, in, in watching and feeling, I just uh, encourage each person to let this meditate to them and it don't stop just because of the session ending, it will be uh, ministering to you for a while because things will pop in as we can receive them. Okay, so that's what I have to offer at this moment and pray that everyone got what they needed from it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ada. You're welcome. I know you are a gifted healer, highly intuitive. So thank you for your insights. Because many times I didn't know how to articulate. I wasn't even aware of my experience. So hearing you share was also off, off, often very helpful for me as one of your students. Well, thank you. You are perfectly welcome. And I'm hearing, like Charlotte was saying, I'm not rushing off to the gym tonight. I'm laying here for as long as I feel like it. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Interruption of white supremacy culture, particularly as a Black woman. One of the speakers was mentioning today about how, particularly those of color, our bodies are expected for labor, okay, and to always mm -hmm. be productive. So mm -hmm. this self-care and self-connection and not rushing off Okay, and being where you are and loving yourself, taking care of yourself is actually an interruption. That's of, right. Of, of white racial dominance. And, okay. yep. and I would just like to say 
being a mature woman that was born during that Jim Crow era and uh, having close connection with many of my family that was descendants, direct descendants of um, slaves, uh, I carry that a lot because I grew up in that environment. And so I am very conscious of this, what's around me. And it helps you to notice how your energy field changes when you are in the midst of white culture all around you. And we don't notice what happens to us, but if you begin to notice what happens to you, you can then make the change. Because as black people, when we look back, you had to be powerful, strong, healthy people. Otherwise, none of us would still be here in this uh, form. We have always had to fight. So you're going to have that fighting spirit, fighting energy, and it can take you down or it can lift you. Because when you meet who you are and not try to change it to be like someone else, being just you and feeling the energy and where it wants to go, your intuitive energy inside of you, and you'll find that you live in your physical form so much better and easier at least for me, mm -hmm. you know, I can live anywhere, go anywhere and not be intimidated. But that is as I learn more about me. So as we learn more about us, we then walk into our power that allows us to confront any situation. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, uh, you know, like everybody's talking, I was, I fought for years in the political system through uh, marching with Dr. King, uh, associating with all of these great move, civil rights movement of people that fought for us with their lives. Mm -hmm. And we have moved into a place where we can fight with our intelligence, mm -hmm. with our commitment to who we are. And that's what I hope everybody got, just a, a total, like we had this long day for those that went to these other sessions, but now we have to keep what we got that's ministering to us yeah. because everybody got something different but it was what they needed. That's yes. that's what I got from this. Like, oh yeah, you needed this. Yes. Thank you, mm -hmm. Ada. And what mm -hmm. you're saying, really, you, you closed us out beautifully, what we're taking with us. So mm -hmm. you invited everyone to consider what it is that they're taking with them after that's this right. long day mm -hmm. and the, the belief and trust that everyone has gotten what they needed here now and just right. giving thanks for the divine mm -hmm. and benevolent order mm -hmm. of our steps. So thank you to Tawny um, who helped as our tech uh, guru for Elaine and Michelle from Upswell who helped us. And also Ada, you know, I love you. And mm -hmm. I am absolutely grateful that you would help hold this space for each of us today. Mm -hmm. And for each of you who have been present um, from Isabel to Tana Trees to Tammy, uh, Danielle, Jasmine, Charlotte, thank you for your presence. And Ashe, until next time, have a good night. Good night, everyone. And much love. Yes, much love.